Okay, so a couple things we have to do before we go ahead and install the crank in the block. Um, first thing being, we're gonna have to measure the rod journals. Um, just like to make sure they're um, obviously good before we install it into the block. Um, and then obviously get our measurements for when we measure our oil clearances on the rods. Which is these here. Um, and then another thing we have to check before we install it in the block is the straightness. Uh, we have to check the run out of the crankshaft. Um, so we like to use just an old girdle for that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so when I'm measuring crankshaft runout, I like to use an old girdle. Uh, this old girdle just has front and rear bearings in it. So it has front and rear bearings in it. Um, I put a little bit of assembly lube on there. You can also use V-blocks. You can also use the block itself. If you take out the middle bearings and put it just the front and rear, you can use the block, you can measure runout that way. Um, but for simplicity, um, I like to use this one here. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead, place the crank inside the girdle. Okay, so when you're setting up your dial gauge to measure your crankshaft runout. You're gonna to wanna to set it up so it's just a little bit to the right of the oil hole here. And then once you have it set up a little right to the oil hole, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the counterweights clear the gauge, clear all the components that are around the gauge. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you have a nice sturdy bench top. Um, I like to use this one here because it's very thick steel. It doesn't flex when I move it. Um, you'll notice on some bore gauges, if you move the table around, the needle will move. So I push on the table, the needle moves. So you gotta kinda take it with a grain of salt, make sure you pay attention to what you're doing with the surroundings of the measurement. Otherwise, you could skew your measurements. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the gauge to zero. Once it's around zero, a couple of test taps, make sure it's setting at zero. And then a couple of needle taps. You're gonna wanna make sure the tip of your needle is also tight. So make sure it's always lining at zero. Tap it, make sure it's always lining at zero. And you can go ahead and you can test your crankshaft again. As we put force on the crankshaft, the needle will move. So we're gonna to have to take an average measurement, try to spin it as steady as possible. And we're getting maybe eight ten-thousandths total runout. So we're getting about four ten-thousandths of an inch of runout, which is basically nothing. So once you've done your measurement here and you've confirmed that the crankshaft is indeed straight, we can move on to the next steps here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna measure the uh, rod journals next and then we're gonna clean the crankshaft and install it into the block. Okay, now that we have the uh, runout measured on the crankshaft, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna measure the rod journals. Again, you're gonna to wanna to zero your micrometer. We've already done this in previous videos, so we're not gonna do it again. Uh, we're expecting to see uh, around, uh, with a one to two inch micrometer, we're expecting to see 1.8881 to 1.883 is what we're expecting to see. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna measure the first one. Okay, so on this first one, we're getting 188825. Um, that is uh, good, that's within our, our expectations. Um, so we're gonna take that as our base for this journal and we're gonna measure, same as the main journals, we're gonna measure around them to make sure they're no taper or minimal taper, again, within two ten thousandths uh, and no add around. So this raw journal, the first one here is spectacular, probably as good as you can ask for. Um, it is uh, within a half ten thousandths of an inch. Um, I can't even measure any sort of outer rounder taper. So that is exactly what you're looking for on a crankshaft. Um, I wish all crankshaft measured like that. So we're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna measure the rest of them, and then we're gonna see uh, what we're looking like for size, and then we're gonna clean it up, put it into the block. So this crankshaft we're just gonna clean up in preparation for install to the block. Um, it's a brand new crankshaft from Nissan, so it was not ground. Um, it's not gonna have excessive metal inside of it. Uh, we're just pretty much gonna clean up any old, uh, I guess, assembly oil uh, or any sort of dust or debris that might've got into it um, during the balancing process. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, we're just gonna run the brushes through, run a little bit of brake on the outside, and then we'll finish up with the isopropyl alcohol uh, before we install the block. All right, now that we have some uh, air and brushes ran through the uh, crankshaft here, we're just gonna give a final clean on the surface of all the journals and around the outside of the crankshaft, um, just with isopropyl alcohol, getting rid of any uh, last uh, residue from uh, washing or cleaning or any of the oil residue from uh, any of the jet washing that was done. Now that we have the crankshaft cleaned, we've got it covered up so it doesn't get dirty while we take off the girdle. We're gonna take off the girdle, 
we're gonna lubricate our journals uh, and then we're gonna put the crankshaft back on. Um, first thing we're gonna check when we install the crankshaft is thrust bearing clearance. Um, there's a couple things you have to do differently on an RB that usually are overlooked. Um, we're gonna touch on those. So now we're gonna be putting the crankshaft into the block. Um, we're gonna be using a red line uh, assembly loop. Um, this stuff washes away really nicely when you do the first engine startup. Um, it doesn't linger and it's usually gone within two oil changes. Um, so I like to get this stuff out of the engine as much as I like it to stay in place. Um, so when you're placing it on the, uh, on the bearings itself, it does stick in place without having any sort of running, um, without being super gooey and uh, you know hard to work with. I have used other assembly loops in the past where you're Pretty much it's like spider webs when you're coming off of the bearing or anything you're assembling. We're going to just want to get a little bit of assembly lube onto the uh, bearings. Um, you can't put too much on here even though if you want to be a little bit tidy with what you're doing, um, you can put a little bit you know, more than you think onto the bearing. And then we're just going to repeat that for all of them. Okay, so now that we have our uh, bearings uh, lubricated with our assembly oil, I purposely, purposely left the um, thrust bearing um, dry. We're gonna be measuring that first. Um, as soon as we're done measuring that, I'm gonna squirt some oil in there, spin the crankshaft a bit, um, get some oil in there so the first startup is not dry. Um, but I don't want to do anything to affect that measurement when I do check the crankshaft uh, thrust clearance. Okay, so now that we've got our girdle placed on, we've got our crankshaft in the block, uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put some assembly lube, again, just to refresh any lube that we already have on here, um, on each one of these holes, and then we're gonna drop our studs back in. Okay, once you have your uh, uh, ARP lubrication on all of the holes for the uh, studs, we can go ahead again and install our studs in the location they came out of. Now that we have the block uh, going together for the final assembly, um, at least for this part of the video, we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna run over the torque specifications again. Um, again, you're gonna wanna run the studs into the block just by hand, just hand tight. You're not trying to reef them tight or anything like that. Um, once you have all those sunken down, we'll talk about the torque specs for this stud. So this next part here, um, often overlooked on RVs just because it is a main girdle. Um, the thrust washer, uh, or thrust bearing needs to be set properly. Um, I usually decide which way to set this based on the type of clutch the engine is gonna be running. The first thing you wanna do obviously is when we put the studs in, you're gonna tighten down all your main stud nuts. Uh, you just wanna get them snug um, so there's no gap on either end here. Uh, and then you're just gonna to wanna to back off the stud uh, washer or nut, sorry, just like a eighth inch, quarter inch, whatever this is, 45 degree angle, whatever you wanna call it. Um, we're going to want the girdle to be slightly loose. Okay. And then we're going to hit the girdle here with the mallet. We're going to move the girdle back. We're trying to align the thrust washer with the block uh, and the girdle. Um, so we're going to just whack this here a couple times. Try to shift the girdle back. And then on this side, we're going to hit the crank. And that'll push the crank, or the girdle with the crank, forward, flush with the block. Um, this one is gonna be a push type clutch, that's why I kinda line it up this way. Um, we're gonna now torque it down, we're gonna measure our crankshaft thrust washer clearance, um, and then we'll see if it's still good. Um, most often than not, this will pretty much set itself and it'll be the clearance that you need within specification. Um, if there is any issues, you may have to do the opposite. You may have to hit the girdle forward and hit the crank back to get it to line up straight. Um, usually the engine is machined in the fashion that I've just done it, but some generations of RBs do require different adjustments. Okay, so again, we're gonna torque our main studs down now. Um, it is 60 foot pounds broken down into three steps. So we're gonna start with 20, work our way to 40 and then 60. All right, now that we have the crank installed, we've got the main studs torqued down to 60 foot-pounds. Um, we're just gonna give it a quick test spin, make sure it feels good, it feels really good. Uh, don't do too much, you don't wanna in introduce too much oil into the thrust washer now. Um, we're gonna check the clearance, um, thrust washer clearance. So 
just like on the crankshaft um, run out check magnetize your dial indicator to the front of the crank here or to the front of the block and then we're going to set our dial indicator to the tip of the crankshaft again make sure your tips tight we're going to zero this out okay so just like on the uh, crankshaft run out we're going to zero our dial indicator make sure she's set to zero uh, then we're going to take a flathead and we're going to move the crankshaft forward and backwards you don't want to put too much pressure you just want to get the measurement. Okay, so on our uh, crankshaft thrust clearance, um, we measured one, one, two thousand of an inch. So just over one thousand of an inch um, clearance. That's a little bit tight um, for what I usually see. So we're going to do the opposite of what we did there. Um, basically, we're trying to get the most amount of clearance out of the thrust bearing. Um, the thrust bearing or washer, whatever you want to call it. Um, the clearance is too tight. That means usually that the girdle is too far back and the block is too far forward, which is just the girdles too far back. Um, that's taken up clearance. Um, so we're trying to get the most amount of clearance to get those to line up properly. Um, once they're lined up properly, you should have the maximum amount of clearance, um, just because you know that's centered and it's hitting both sides of the thrust washer evenly. So, go like this. You hit the girdle forward and the crankshaft backwards. Okay, so we've set our dial gauge again. Now we've made the girdle adjustments, set it to zero. We're gonna take our flathead again. We're gonna pry the crankshaft back and forward. And that's about two thou. See, zero-ish, two thou. That's exactly what we'd like to see. Now you know you set your uh, thrust clearance correctly. Um, that's the maximum amount of clearance we'll get out of it. Um, like I said at the start there, you have 50-50 chance of getting it right the first time, hitting the girdle back and the crank forward or vice versa, hitting the girdle forward and hitting the crank back. Um, you end up with a, a result that you look for as long as you measure it um, one of the two times. Okay, so once you have your uh, thrust bearing clearance um, set um, and you know that everything is um, kosher and you've torqued down your main studs, um, since you won't be taking it apart again, you can go ahead and take a paint pen, just mark your studs. This is how I know that I have torqued these. Um, if I have to step away and come back to the engine, I'm not guessing. Um, I don't have to uh, retorque them again. Um, this will also tell you, um, I'm sure among other <laughs> symptoms, um, if you happen to take it apart for service, uh, if any of the bolts have loosened off or turned, uh, it will no longer match obviously where you marked on the stud. Um, this stuff is good, it doesn't wash away with oil, so do a final spin. Very nice. Next up, we're gonna be installing the oil jets. We're gonna move on to measuring the rods, the piston pin clearance, fitting the pistons into the block, and then we'll do the final assembly with the girdle, the oil pump, and the rear main plate. <laughs> 